Uh, if you go to the toothpaste aisle, what you will discover is the toothpaste aisle has thousands of different choices. Every single one of them is a variety of Crest toothpaste. You can get Crest with tartar control. You can get Crest without tartar control. You can get big Crest. You can get small Crest. You can get purple Crest. You can get Crest that has sparkles. You can get kitty Crest. You can get adult Crest. All of it's Crest. Now, a retailer like CVS charges hundreds of thousands of dollars to the, to the manufacturer just to put a product on the shelf. You actually have to pay for placement. So why in the world would Crest be paying for an entire wall full of Crest? And in fact, why would they even have all those different varieties, given that there's only one active ingredient in any of them, which is fluoride, and every single one of those varieties contains the same amount of fluoride? The reason they have all of those different varieties is so they can buy the entire wall and fill it up, and none of their competitors can get any shelf space. Because CVS, even if people are paying for placement, CVS is not going to carry four aisles of toothpaste. They're only going to, going to carry one aisle. So what, what Crest is doing very sneakily is they're actually locking out the competition. And it doesn't matter if there are people out there that have a better product at a lower price. They can't get in front of the customers because Crest has them locked out. So I, I often say that what, what business strategy is, is it's how can you force yourself to win without having to produce a better product at a lower price, um, which is a horribly cynical way of thinking about it, but I actually think it's kind of accurate. In today's world, so... Um, uh, another, so, so one way to lock people in is to crowd everyone else out the way the Crest does in the toothpaste aisle. Another one is to have agreements with distributors. So let's say that you are a producer of intellectual capital, you write books or you're an expert on some topic, and you do courses. You do online courses and you do them through, through Udemy or through different schools or you do them through joint ventures. Well, if I do a course in how to retouch photography on Udemy, well, Everyone's doing a course on how to retouch photography in Udemy. That's not going to get me any unique visitors. I'm not crowding anyone out. But under this strategic principle of can I lock out distribution, what you could do is you could, you could maybe do a joint venture with someone who has a large photography list, but part of your agreement is you won't feature anyone else doing this topic. I'll give you my best content, and I'll give you content that no one else has, as long as you don't feature anyone else on this topic for the next nine months. And what you've just done there is you've bought yourself a monopoly on that audience for nine months that even if someone has better content than you, they can't get in. And that is, again, locking up your channels of distribution. Um, one more example that applies to virtually anyone who's marketing anything on the internet is SEO. If you notice, if you search for a product on Amazon, I mean, whoever looks past the first 10 results, almost no one. So those first 10 results, isn't it funny how like four of them are Amazon and three of them are Best Buy and four more of them are, you know, Kmart or some other gigantic large Fortune 500 company? It's not a coincidence. They have warehouses full of people that are constantly optimizing because search engine optimization is, a is now these days because everyone finds their information through the internet, search engine optimization is itself a strategic move. That's how you lock out your competitors from even being seen. And in fact, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I'm saying this like it's a good thing. I actually think it's a bad thing overall um, because I have been in cases where there was some really wonderful, amazing manual for how to do something or online course that I saw once, wanted to find it again, but somebody else had optimized a different web page for the same keywords and had higher ranking. And anytime I tried to search for the original high quality, awesome, amazing content, instead I got this website that was a complete piece of crap, except that it had been optimized for just those keywords. So um, to summarize locking out distribution, you want to lock out distribution by limiting anyone else's ability to be able to get to people for a limited amount of time or a limited amount of space, except for you during the time that you want to lock out distribution. Um, uh, so that's, that's one way, that's one competitive response you can make. Um, yeah, I, can I just jump in there? I think that that's really interesting. And uh, you can, as you gave the example of uh, Google search results uh, being the, the shop aisle now, I think it's, it's, a, it's a great comparison because really everyone is doing searches on Google uh, and if they're looking uh, for something, um, whether it's uh, depending on you know, what level of uh, you know, the decision, how far down they are uh, ready to buy, uh, it's almost at every level. So really, it is an important part of, of your overall 
um, I don't know, do you want to call it a, 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 well, it is kind of a strategy now, isn't it? You just say that's one option. Mm. It's, it's definitely a strategy. I mean, it's definitely a strategy or has strategic implications because, 